This is the story of the Emperor's New Clothes, written by Hans Christian Andersen. Many years ago, there lived an emperor. Uh, an emperor is like a king who was so tremendously fond of stylish new clothes that he used all his money for dressing himself. He didn't care about his soldiers, didn't care about the theater or driving in the park, except to show off his new clothes. He had an outfit for each hour of the day. And as they say about a king, that he's in council, he's meeting with important people. Here, they always said, the emperor's in the dressing room. There were lots of amusements going on in the big city where he lived, many strangers came every day, and one day two swindlers arrived. Uh, I think the swindlers are going to try to trick the emperor. Let's wait and see what happens. They said they were weavers, and that they could weave the most beautiful material one could imagine. Not only were the colors and patterns unusually lovely, but the clothes sewn from the fabric had a remarkable characteristic. They were invisible to any person who was incompetent in his job or who was simply foolish. The emperor's in the dressing room. Those would be some wonderful clothes, the emperor thought. By wearing them, I could find out which men in my kingdom aren't fit for their jobs. And I'd be able to tell the wise from the foolish. That fabric must be woven into some clothing for me at once. And he gave the two swindlers a big deposit so that they could start their work. They set up two looms. Look, that is, that is the loom. That is what they were using to make the clothing for the emperor. They set up two looms and pretended to work, but they had absolutely nothing on the loom. Right away, they demanded the finest silk and the most splendid gold, and they put these things into their bags and worked on the empty looms long into the night. I would really like to know how far they've come with the material, thought the emperor. But he was a little uneasy with the thought that those who were dumb or not at all fit for their jobs couldn't see it. Of course, he knew very well that he didn't have to worry about himself, but he decided to send someone else first to see how it was going. All the people in town knew about the power of the fabric, and everyone was eager to see how incompetent or foolish his neighbor was. I'll send my honest old envoy over to the weavers, the emperor thought. He can best determine how the fabric is turning out because he's smart and no one 
is better suited to his job than he is. So, the dependable old envoy went to the hall where the two swindlers were working on the empty looms. My goodness, thought the old envoy as his eyes flew wide open. I can't see anything. But he didn't say that. Both swindlers asked him to come closer and asked him if it wasn't a beautiful pattern and lovely colors. They pointed at the empty loom and the poor old envoy continued to stare. But he couldn't see anything because nothing was there. My goodness, he thought, could it be that I'm foolish? I never thought that. No one must find out. Is it possible I'm not fit for my job? It's just totally impossible to admit that I can't see the fabric. Well now, you're not saying anything about it, said one who was pretending to weave. Oh, it's beautiful, absolutely too awesome for words, the old envoy said and peered through his glasses. What a pattern and what colors. Yes, I'll tell the emperor that I like it very much. We're pleased to hear that, both weavers said. And then they pointed out the strange pattern and colors by name. The old envoy paid close attention so he could repeat the information when he came back to the emperor. And that's what he did. Then the swindlers demanded more money and more silk and gold needed for the weaving. They put it all in their own pockets and not a shred appeared on the loom. But they continued as before to weave on the empty loom. Soon, the emperor sent another competent official to see how the weaving was progressing and if the fabric could, would still be finished. The same thing happened to him. He peered and stared, but since there wasn't anything on the loom, he couldn't see a thing. Well, isn't this a beautiful piece of material? Both swindlers asked him and pointed out and explained the lovely pattern, which wasn't there. I'm not foolish, the man thought. So then I'm not fit for my excellent job? That's odd enough, but no one must find out about it. So he praised the fabric he didn't see and assured them that he was delighted with the beautiful colors and the lovely pattern. It's just marvelous, he told the emperor. Everyone in town was talking about the beautiful fabric. 
So then, the emperor wanted to see the fabric while it was still on the loom. With a large group of selected advisors, among them the two who had already been there, he went off to see the clever crooks who were weaving with every fiber of their being, but without a thread on the loom. The loom in that picture does have threads on it, but in this story there was nothing on the loom. Isn't it magnifique, magnificent? asked both of the wise old officials. Look at the pattern, your majesty, and the colors. And they pointed at the empty loom because they thought the others could see the fabric. What? thought the emperor. I don't see a thing. This is dreadful. Am I foolish? Am I not fit to be emperor? This is the most terrible thing that could happen to me. Oh, it's just splendid, said the emperor. Did y'all catch that? The emperor, he could not see it either, but he did not want people to know that he could not see it. So he said, oh, it's splendid. It has my highest approval. And he nodded contentedly as he observed the empty loom, for he didn't want to say that he couldn't see anything. The whole group that accompanied, accompanied him looked, looked and looked, but didn't get anything more out of it than any of the others. So they echoed the emperor. <coughs> Excuse me. So they echoed the emperor. Oh, it's very lovely. And they advised the emperor to wear the splendid new clothes from the fabric for the first time at the big parade that was soon to occur. It's magnificent, delightful, excellent, was on everyone's lips. And they were all thoroughly pleased with the fabric. The emperor gave each of the swindlers a knight's cross to hang on his chest and the title of Knight of the Loom. The entire night before the parade the swindlers sat illuminated by a flood of light from more than 16 candles. People could see that they were busy getting the emperor's new clothes ready. They pretended to take the fabric from the loom and cut into thin air with huge scissors. They sewed with threadless needles, and at last they said, There, now the clothes are finished. The emperor came to them with his most distinguished cavaliers. Both swindlers lifted one arm in the air, as if they were holding something, and said, See? Here are the pants, here's the jacket, and here's the cape. They continued on and on. They are light as cobwebs. 
you might think you aren't wearing anything at all. But that's the beauty of this fabric. Yes, yes, said all the cavaliers, but they couldn't see a thing. For there wasn't anything to see. Now, if your royal majesty would be so kind as to remove your clothes, said the swindlers, we'll put the new ones on right here in front of this big mirror. The emperor laid aside his clothes and the swindlers acted as if they gave him each piece of the new outfit they had sewed. And the emperor turned and twisted in front of the mirror. My Lord, how good that looks on you. How beautifully it fits, they all said. What a pattern, what lovely colors, what a precious outfit it is. Lord, how good that looks on you, how beautifully it fits. They're waiting outside with the canopy that will be carried over the, over the throne in the parade, said the master of ceremonies. Well, I'm ready, said the emperor. Doesn't it fit beautifully? And he pirouetted, like he turned around, in front of the mirror one more time. He was pretending to admire his splendid outfit. The chamberlains, who were to carry the train of the cape, fumbled around on the floor as if they were lifting up the train. They walked carrying their arms in the air and didn't dare act as if they saw nothing. So the emperor paraded under the lovely canopy and all the people on the streets and in the windows said, my goodness, how awesome the emperor's new clothes are. What a splendid train he has on his cape. He has a, a coat with a long part at the back of it. And that's what is called the, the train of his, of his clothing. But remember how beautifully it fits. Is he wearing anything? Let's find out. None of the people would admit that they didn't see anything because then they would be fit for their jobs or they'd be called terribly foolish. None of the emperor's clothes had been so admired before. Listen to what a little boy said. It was a little boy, and he looked up at the emperor, and he says, But he isn't wearing anything at all. Listen to the voice of innocence, his father said. And each person whispered to the other what the child had said. But he isn't wearing anything at all, everyone shouted at last. The emperor shuddered because he was afraid they were right, but he thought, I have to 
finish the parade. And the Chamberlains walked on, carrying the train that wasn't there. That was the story of the Emperor's New Clothes, written by Hans Christian Andersen. That one green tile, written by Britta Joanna. For my daughters, Jordan and Sheldon, who teach and inspire me with open hearts. My mom once said, to my surprise, out there in the world, someone has my eyes. She looks just like me from her head to her toes. Can this be true? It's possible, I suppose. I wonder what her dreams are and what she hopes to be. Could she be a stargazer? Does she think of me? Maybe she lives in Sweden and plays marbles in the sand. Perhaps she's a ballerina who twirls in a distant land. She could sit in mud puddles on a quiet Spanish street. or braid necklaces from dandelions in the comforting Brazilian heat. She likely visits her grandpa every Sunday in June and counts the floating jellyfish beneath the Italian moon. I bet she wears dresses patterned with flowers or has holes in her jeans in a city with tall towers. Maybe she sells fruit in a Japanese town and recites her nightly prayers in a soft satin gown. What would it be like if we met face to face? Would we just stare? or talk, or perhaps embrace. Would it be like looking straight into a mirror, or glancing at a photograph that isn't quite clear? Does she have a sister or a brother? Like me? Does she have a playhouse or a fort up in a tree? I think each night she, wi she wishes upon a star or finds pictures in billowy clouds from afar. Just imagine what 
all this could be. She sees the same brilliant moon that I see. We both exist under this great big sky. And I, and I will always wonder as time goes by whether in China, France, or some other place who this person is who shares my face. Yet, like that one green tile beneath my knee, my mom still reminds me that there's only one of me. The end. And that was the story of that one green tile. Tiger, tiger, where are you? Written by Mujahid Khan, illustrated by Manjari Chakravarti. Tiger, tiger, where are you? Here I am. You found me. Tiger, tiger, where are you? I was just here. Didn't you see my false eyes? I tricked you. Tiger, tiger, where are you? I was just here. Didn't you hear my growl? I want other tigers to know that this part of the forest is mine. Tiger, tiger, where are you? I was just here. Didn't you hear that loud mouth Langer's warning? He told the entire forest that I was on the move. Tiger, tiger, where are you? I was just here. Didn't you see what I ate yesterday? The hair and nails should give you a clue. Tiger, tiger, where are you? I was just here. Didn't you smell my scent on the rock? The spray helps a tigress find me. Tiger, tiger, where are you? I was just here. Didn't you see my scratch marks on the tree? I was sharpening my claws. Tiger, tiger, where are you? I was just here. Didn't you see my footprints in the soft soil? Look hard. I could be coming or going. Tiger, tiger, where are you? I was just here. Didn't you see my watery trail by the lake? I took a nap in the cool water. And that is the story of Tiger, tiger, where are you?